Welcome back to my channel if you're returning. If you're new, my name is Brianna, AKA Dollface PA. Thank you for joining me today. Before I get into today's topic, I actually wanna give a shout out to one of my followers. I had no idea that my videos had not been uploading in the highest quality, I guess like 1080 phd or whatever you want to call it i am still relatively new to youtube so i just was like rec like uploading them regularly but he one of my subscribers brought to my attention that if i um upload them like this the quality is much better so i just want to say thank you so much for uh bringing that to my attention because i honestly didn't know i'm still learning anywho today's topic is going to be on how to pay back your student loans I think it's one of the topics that really gets lost when talking about how great the physician assistant field is, which it is. And I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about PA school and how to pass the pants and how to get a job. And you know, we spend a lot of time talking about salaries and when you get a job, you will be paid very well, which is true. But I think it kind of goes like, hush, hush, swept under the rug, how much debt the vast majority of us are coming out of PA school with. Um, as I mentioned in my first video about why I chose to be a PA instead of a doctor, it's, of course, a lot less debt than you would incur if you went to medical school to become a medical doctor. But nonetheless, it is still a decent amount of money. I mean, most of us come out of PA school just from PA school alone, owing about $100,000. And if you had undergrad loans, too, you can add that onto it and if you you know had to get an apartment and all of that while you were in PA school and had to take out additional loans for living expenses you can add that onto it too some people walk out of there owing $200,000 $250,000 and so today I want to talk about the public service loan forgiveness program obviously there are a lot of different options for how you can pay your loans back some people just want to do a standard 10-year repayment that's fine. Some people were very blessed and their patient, their, I'm sorry, their patients, oh my gosh. Their parents are uh, you know, paying their loans for them or maybe somebody paid for school for them outright. But for those of you who are like, I have $250,000 a year, I'm sorry, $250,000 in loans, that divided by 10, you can kind of do the math really quickly. That's a really high payment each month. I remember when I was looking at my debt and I was very blessed, like my debt was high. It was, it was six figures, but it wasn't as high as a lot of my friends. And when I was looking at what the standard repayment plan was gonna cost me, I was gonna be owing because it automatically locks you into whatever that rate is. So let's say if you have $100,000 worth of student loan debt, and this is not even talking about interest, I'm talking about the principal. If you have $100,000 of student loan debt, you can divide that by 10, which would be $10,000 a year, and then you can divide that by 12 to figure out what your monthly payment would be plus interest. So that's already a lot of money. But if you owe more than $100,000, it's very, very possible that on a standard 10-year repayment, you would be owing more than $1,000 a month on student loans. And although we have a very good salary as physician assistants, that is a lot of money. It's almost like a second rent. And for me, it wasn't feasible. So the public service loan forgiveness, it's a program that forgives the remaining balance of your loans after you've made 120 consecutive qualifying payments. So 120 payments is the equivalent of 10 years, but a qualifying payment just means that you are a full-time employee at an employer that qualifies for public service loan forgiveness. And the way you know that is if the hospital or healthcare system that you work for is a nonprofit. And that's something that you would wanna check with HR about upon being hired. Do you guys honor public service loan forgiveness or you know, is this a nonprofit organization if that's something that you're interested in doing? So that's the first criteria. You have to be a full-time employee at a nonprofit organization. You have to have direct federal loans. I know it gets a little uh, bit different if you did like a plus loan or a parent plus loan. I'm not really sure all of my loans were federal. And so they have to be direct loans in order to qualify for public service loan forgiveness. 
you have to repay under an income driven repayment plan and there are four different types i'm not going to go into like the specifics of which each one's of what each one is but basically each year you have to submit this document that i'm sorry it, it's basically i think you can like just import your w-2 from the year before and they look at how much money you made and they determine your monthly payment for your student loans based on how much money you're making and you have to do this once a year because if you're getting a raise every year your student loan payment is going to go up every year but this is still a much cheaper option than doing a standardized 10-year payment it saves you a little bit of money because i'm not sure what algorithm they use but it ends up i think in the grand scheme of things it ended up saving me a couple of hundred bucks which is something and as long as you make the payment 120 times the rest will be forgiven so it's it's a good program if um that's something that you're interested in the 120 payments do not have to be consecutive so for example if you are working at a organization that honors public service loan forgiveness for two years and you make 24 qualifying payments and then you go work at an urgent care for three years that doesn't um uh that does not qualify for public service loan forgiveness but then you start working at a new hospital that does it picks right back up at the 25th payment and so they don't have to be consecutive and the interest is accumulating but the good thing is whatever is left at the end will be forgiven and so it's something to look into because i think uh when you really if have a very large amount of crushing debt it's just um very challenging and difficult unless you have a very ideal financial situation which i know a lot of people coming out of pa school don't necessarily have some people have families some people have children are married and really don't have the means to be uh, essentially paying an additional mortgage or rent a month on student loans so this is just an option obviously um a lot of people are very weary about this because i know there was a situation some years back where people got to their 10th year and made their 120th payment and the rest of their loans were not forgiven and that was like a very big story in the news people a lot of people to this day are very skeptical about doing public service loan forgiveness because they're fearful that what if i get to the end and something is wrong and they don't forgive the rest of my loans that possibility is i guess you could say there but i believe that if you do what you're supposed to do which is submit your income driven um repayment form annually you have to do that every single year and you uh submit your employment certification form which is basically a form that hr at your job completes just certifying that you have worked there for the last 12 years they will count those payments that you made in the preceding year towards the 120 payments i don't really see how if you do those things correctly the 120 payments will be dis like they can't dispute it because they have it on file that you paid it you have all the documentation saying that you're employer certified that you were a full-time employee during the time of making those payments i think in the situation where the people did not get their loans forgiven those things may not have happened the way they were supposed to and so what i would say is just be in contact with your um loan servicer frequently which i am always on top of it i'm calling them every three months like hey just calling in and do i have anything due? do i need to give you guys any paperwork anything like just stay on top of it if you're gonna do it is what i would say i think it's a good option you know um at the end of the day everybody wants to try to make their student loan payment as small as possible and this is absolutely the way to do it there is no other route that will allow you to pay a smaller monthly amount because as i stated if you do the standardized 10-year repayment it's going to be more and you know the payment is going to be a lot no matter what because you're making a lot of money and the payment is based on your income so it is what it is so literally the day after i recorded this video i found this girl on both twitter and tiktok who just had her loans forgiven she's an attorney and she basically just talks about a lot of what i'm speaking toward now which is that if you do what you're supposed to do submit the forms your loans will be forgiven so i think that's very encouraging for people that may be skeptical about taking this route I can now officially say I know of a person who this has worked for. So that's something to bear in mind. This is, you know, I am in no way, shape or form 
a financial advisor so uh please do your own research before you make this decision but this is what a lot of people that i know do and i do it too and it's something that i wanted to share with you uh when i was in pa school when i started getting towards graduation i was very like startled and alarmed when i started to like really look at how much money i owed back and i was like wow i kind of started doing the numbers and it like made me panic and i was like there's no way that i want to pay x amount of money a month for my student loans like this is crazy like i thought i was going to be able to enjoy the money that i make and not spend it all on loans and I feel like this is definitely a way, I don't wanna say a way around it because regardless, you're gonna to have to pay them, but this is definitely a good option if you choose to do it. One thing I do wanna say, when you first submit your first income driven, <laughs> I'm laughing because this is crazy. Let me start over. Your student loans are not due until six months after graduation. So, six, seven months, something like that. Cause I graduated in May and my first student loan payment was not due until December. I started working in August, cool. Um, after you graduate, you can go ahead and start the public service loan forgiveness application. They'll ask you to submit an income driven repayment form. I made the mistake of waiting until I started my job to submit my pay stub. And so they calculated my payments for the first year that I was paying based off how much money I was making. I thought this was normal. But then I talked to a lot of my other friends who had just started working and who were also doing public service loan forgiveness. And they were like, oh, my payment is $0. My payment is $0 for the first 12 months. And those 12 payments of $0 count towards the 120 payments. And I'm like, how is your payment $0? And it's counting towards the 120. The caveat is this. If you don't hear anything else that I say, this is the caveat. You have to fill out the income-driven repayment form before you start working because what they're going to look at is your W-2 from the prior year. And chances are the prior year you were in PA school and you did not have a job. So you had zero income. And if you had zero income, then they will calculate your payment for the year as $0. So it's like a free 12 months that you get because the payments are still counting towards the 120, but you're paying zero dollars. So I kind of messed myself up with that because I just didn't know. So I want to share the things that I messed up on with you guys so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. Okay. And one more thing, I'm going to leave a link to the public service loan forgiveness website in the description box, just in case you're Finishing up PA school, this is something that you want to read a little bit more about or maybe even apply for. I'm going to include the link down below. Um, if you have any questions, um, email me, contact me on Instagram, contact me on Twitter, always available. Uh, on my next video, I think I'm going to talk about the challenges of being a PA and uh, specifically some instances where I have encountered difficult patients and how I handled that because you will have that. I mean, you're dealing with all types of people. And so you guys stay tuned for that. I will see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Love y'all. Be safe. Bye.